Now we're just going to come on to a really early cricket ball that Nicholas has got in his collection. He's just going to uh, enthrall us with uh, how he got it and the history behind it. This uh, shoe um, cricket ball came up for sale at Christie's in June 1995. I decided it was interest to me because it was uh, found behind an old plaster wall in Lewis, which they thought had been uh, not replastered in the last 250 years. Just to go back a bit, in Sussex, in those olden times, everyone was very concerned in keeping evil spirits away from their house. And in particular in Sussex, it was considered the thing to do to hide a shoe. And when I say hide a shoe, hide where nobody of their era could see it. And that is why even today, shoes are still found in chimney recesses in old Sussex cottages. This family decided to put it behind a wall which they then plastered over and this old cricket wall was found with them. The Northampton Museum for Shoes said the shoe was made around the 1760s and it is bleed the cricket ball comes from around the same date. It would have been made by the local cobbler and saddler. And after I had purchased this ball, having found out that neither the MCC or Melbourne Cricket Museum were interested in purchasing it, I got it for what I thought was quite a reasonable sum. I took this cricket ball to Dukes uh, to see what they thought of it. The two elderly gentlemen there who had been hand stitching cricket balls for test matches for years and years and years were most interested and they were delighted to show me what they thought was a copy of the first cricket ball they made and they said it is so like, like your cricket ball we are delighted I said you're not half as delighted as I am uh, thanks for that uh, information on that cricket ball. Fantastic, Nicholas. Um, we're just going to go on some of your uh, major collection of scorecards and really early ones up till uh, recent ones. So we'll start with uh, lovely early ones. So far away. Well, to start with, uh, the first uh, match I watched at Hove was in 1946 against the Indians. And my memory of it was that the first four Indian batsmen all scored centuries and one of them scored a double century. So obviously as a nine-year-old, I thought that was the norm. Mm. But I kept that scorecard and several years later, uh, um, I started to collect them properly. And then my wife, uh, when I was playing cricket in Worthing, went off round the local shops and in a junk shop, she found a whole bunch of 1930s Sussex home school cars almost complete. So at that stage, I really took it up seriously. And I have now found that uh, looking through my collection quickly, I have over 2,300 Sussex first class school cards. <laughs> and when I say first class, some of them go way back uh, before the championship started. Sussex and Kent were playing matches from very early days. Uh, I find that I've got 155 scorecards of county matches between before 1900. So the first of these I will show is an 1841, 1840, sorry, which is ex Arthur Shrewsbury collection uh, and shows the scorecard of that match, which is a very large scorecard for the Times. Um, you, will show, you will see from the scorecard that in those days they didn't bother with such things as bowling analysis. The second scorecard is from an 1839 match of Kent v Sussex 
And it's interesting to note that those were the only two county matches played that year. One at home and one away. And this one is the one at Town Melling. Uh, I'm lucky enough to also have a collection of window bills, which are now becoming more and more difficult to find. The one that is now being shown is for an 1833 match played on the Royal Browns at Brighton uh, in August between Sussex and All England. And the players are named there. Um, these, as I said earlier, these window bills are now exceptionally difficult to find. Here is another very early scorecard which shows the position of the second day's play in September 1837, a game between Sussex and All England. And it was the last important match of the 1837 season, Sussex winning this game by 79 runs. Again, these are very, very difficult to find nowadays. This, I believe, is way before scorecards were issued. So it is a handwritten scorecard, which would be, have been completed at the time between Sussex and the Middlesex club. And uh, is one of the oldest I have in my collection. And is also in the book that I have recently published on the Sussex Cricket Museum. Uh, this is the book which I have recently published on the Sussex Cricket Museum. It was a long, long haul uh, to get the club's agreement to set up a museum. But for those who want to read about it in this booklet, it will tell you how it all ended. And it eventually worked out far better than I could ever have anticipated.